Hey, it's Dry Bear. Back again with our Diablo 4 build guide, and today we're talking about one of my personal favorites for Necromancer, a Corpse Explosion build. I've loved Corpse Explosion ever since the very early days of Diablo, and of course Diablo 2 with Necro. Always one of my favorite ideas. I love, I mean, I worked on the game design for Opwash and, and Smite, and uh, kind of recreated that Corpse Explosion there. So I love it, it's really awesome. And this build maximizes all of that benefit for putting everything into Corpse Explosion and being able to kill, spawn more corpses, detonate them, and do even more damage. So it's absolutely uh, amazing. And when I play this build, I always end up laughing. Because when you really get it rolling, there's momentum, there's just so many explosions, your screen is shaking, and everything's going crazy and dying. I just think it's hilarious when it goes off. I've also used d4builds.gg to create a, uh, a one sheet that you can use for the build itself. Uh, these things will obviously be updated as we uh, go through the game. Some of these may not fit perfectly, but I think this is the build for Corpse Explosion, and you'll find that down in the description if you want to have a one sheet that you can reference. What's great about D4 builds is that you can use uh, a full skill tree in it. It's going to have uh, an early estimation of Paragon before we get full access to it, and of course, legendaries plus skills and all of your uh, key passives. So let's jump into the build. The key here is going to be Corpse Generation. It's one of the main resources for a corpse explosion build. That shouldn't be a surprise to you. And we need to be generating corpses constantly. Luckily, there's tons in the toolkit across all of your different categories for you to generate corpses constantly. So let's start with the builder, Decompose. There isn't really anything that fits perfectly besides Decompose. This is a channeling. Uh, you generate essence per second. There's also modifiers you can get where it, it spreads in AoE. You also get Essence while they're dying, and you get bonuses for your minion damage, which can be useful for the Reapers we're going to run. But also, for every 2.5 seconds you're channeling, uh, that number may change by the time that Blizzard gets a hold of it, but uh, that will they'll generate extra corpses. So when you're out of Essence, uh, and you need to generate some, Decompose is great, and it can even scale the damage of your minions and get more bonuses there, and that's what we want for the modifiers. And a shocker, I know, but roll with me on this one. I don't think there's a core skill that fits in this build. All of your spending of essence is going to be corpse explosion and bone spirit. You actually don't need a core spill or core ability in this build. It doesn't fit. It doesn't work. You don't need it. So we're actually going to skip the core tree here. Now keep in mind that while you're if you're leveling with this, your first ten levels are going to be a little awkward, um, and you probably shouldn't be running this until you get to at least level twenty or thirty to get enough skill points to play it. Uh, but you can, I mean, it'll work. Your minions will do the work. You can have your builder with essence and then you can get down there. Or in the meantime, you can run with reap or just kind of get some modifiers uh, for blight or something just to kind of run until you can actually get the build itself. But I don't think core skills work in this build. You don't really need it and you have plenty of ways to spend your spirit. Though there is a nice passive that we'll pick up in the core tree, which is your lucky hit has a chance to spawn a corpse at the target's location and it's doubled against bosses. This helps against bosses when you're doing tons of single target. They'll drop corpses a lot more often, and you can run Lucky Hit to increase this, which is super nice. Next is the star of the show, Corpse Explosion. You want to max this out as fast as you can, as fast as your points will allow. And then for moderate modifiers, we're going to get the required uh, radius increase, and then increase damage to targets that are slowed, stunned, or vulnerable. And we will want ways to apply vulnerable either through our party members or through the abilities that we choose we'll get benefits for doing so. Next, we want Blood Mist. So we're going to get two abilities in the Macabre tree, and we're skipping one in core, so there's going to be room in our build for that. And the reason we like Blood Mist is manyfold. There's so many good things about this ability. Not only are you becoming immune for the channeling of Blood Mist, it's like Vladimir's pool in League of Legends. You just disappear and you can't be targeted, which is great for moving around the room. You also heal, which is a great way to keep yourself alive. On top of that, we're going to get the modifiers where you uh, casting a skill that overpowers reduces the cooldown of Blood Mist, and the modifier we're going to pick up here at the end of the fork is going to be Blood Mist leaves behind a corpse every one second for its duration. So we create minimum of three corpses uh, without more modifiers later on in the game um, that you will put your corpses down, so it's free three corpses. On top of that, we're going to run a legendary that makes it so Blood Mist triggers corpse explosions, which scales off your corpse explosion ability plus all modifiers. You can actually become immune and then spawn corpses and detonate corpses and there's just explosions all everywhere and you can't even be targeted. It's ridiculous. The one I'm talking about is the explosive mist aspect. Blood mist triggers corpse explosion on surrounding corpses and when blood mist detonates a corpse, its cooldown is reduced. So actually if you have enough corpses on the ground before you start blood mist, 
you can actually completely reset the cooldown of Blood Mist before you come out of it again, which means you can go right back into it. So the key that we're talking about at the beginning of this build, which is spawning corpses, if your corpse generation rate is high enough, you can actually be using Blood Mist on cooldown, which means you're healing, you're triggering other benefits, you're also uh, untargetable for most of this, and so it's very safe to do this. You just need to make sure that you're spawning enough corpses to benefit. We also want to pick up Grim Harvest. Consuming a corpse generates essence. It means that we can detonate more and we can spend more on Bone Spirit, which we'll get to in a second. And I also think Fueled by Death is a great addition as well because uh, it's just free damage. Consuming a corpse, which counts by corpse explosion, the last I tested, increases your damage and you'll get free damage for four seconds. With good corpse generation, you should be able to have this buff up 24-7. When we come to the next tree, we're going to skip both of our curses as well. I don't think there's room for curses in this build. You actually don't need them as much. And you can also find other ways to proc curses if you really wanted to. But I don't think you really need it. Now, of course, I haven't been able to test this against super end game high HP bosses. It's possible we may need some of these modifiers. And of course, when that happens, I'll be able to make some updates to my builds. Uh, once we have more but as of right now you do not need curses in this build you'd rather spend those points elsewhere now coming to our big spender bone spirit so this is our single target damage ability and because we are not consuming essence at a very high rate at all most of what we're doing is spawning corpses and detonating them we have plenty of essence to play around so i think this is actually a great hybrid option for running single target damage with bone spirit because when you cast Bone Spirit, it consumes all of your essence. So all the essence generation we have from consuming corpses, we'll get to be able to get back up to full and cast Bone Spirit. And the key of this build is it's a very momentum-driven build, which means that you need to get a kill to start getting more kills. So if everything's alive and you have no corpses down, you can't corpse explode anything. But if you can Bone Spirit and kill one or two mobs that drops two corpses, then you can detonate those, which makes more corpses, which detonate makes more corpses, detonate makes more corpses. So this helps you kill elites, uh, champions, and bosses, but it also helps you make corpses on the regular, and you have tons of free essence to spend on it. We're going to get the modifiers that increases the critical chance that lowers its cooldown, which is really nice, and additional crit chance on it as well, which gives you really high single target burst damage, which combines all of the best AOE in the game for Corpse Explosion with some of the best single target, which gives you a nice spread. Most of these bone uh, passives here are actually really good for Bone Spirit. Uh, bone skills have a chance, uh, increased crit chance for each 10 essence you spend, which we're going to be spending at mostly full essence. You can pick up things like Compound Fracture as well, and then if you want to go to my overall build, we'll go through all the bone passives that we'll be able to pick up to modify this. Next, our ultimate of choice is Army of the Dead. This thing is amazingly good. Call forth the deep buried dead, you start spawning skeletons. On top of that, however, when Army of the Dead's volatile skeletons that rise up explode, they have a chance to leave behind a corpse. We can even modify this further with other gear options to make this even better, but it gives us more corpse generation, and it raises skeletal warriors and skeletal mages, the ones you have chosen, and with this build, we're going to choose the mages and skeletal warriors that spawn corpses. So while Army of the Dead is active, you get tons of nice AoE spread, nice distraction, but you're spawning tons of corpses, which you can then blood mist and consume and spawn more and consume and spawn more. And it just, this is one of my favorite moments in the game right now, is running this build when Army of the Dead is active. Now, when it comes to key passive, there's nothing that fits perfectly, but what I would recommend is getting the, Asa, the, the bone spirit, bone damage key passive. But an alternative, if you feel like you're not tanky enough, is to run Rathmus Vigor, and you can also uh, get extra bonuses on overpowers. Uh, this is the safer option and probably is better when you're leveling, but I would say that Ossified Essence is significantly better. This makes your Bone Spirit hit like a Mack truck. For each Essence you spend above 50, it has increased damage. And remember, we have high crit chance with it and increased damage on it, and it will have a higher chance of killing. When it kills, it spawns a corpse. We kill more, we make more corpses. We Bone Spirit again, we kill, we make corpses. It's the, it's the circle of life and death. Now let's talk minions. When it comes to minions, you won't be able to pick up a golem. I don't think it fits in the build. You can sacrifice one slot for skeletal minions, but other than that, I don't think the golem fits into that. That being said, the final golem option here, if you sacrifice it, you can increase crit strike damage, which makes your bone spirit even better and gives you even bonus damage on top of that. 
So not having a golem isn't really that big of a loss. Special mention here for the first upgrade on the bone golem, the first golem you get. You can make it so that when, you, when the golem takes damage, you spawn corpses. This is great for leveling when you're first starting out with this build, but it starts to fall off later on when your corpse generation is good and also your golems can't stay alive as easily when you're not investing in them. Uh, so in that option, I would definitely go down towards the iron golem to get the sacrifice. Uh, but it is an option when you're first unlocking golems to get this if you really want to. For mages, we want bone mages. When they die, they, uh, they leave behind a corpse and they fortify you, which is awesome. Gives you a little bit of more tankiness. You're going to be healing a lot, which is nice. So you have a higher chance to get some overpower bonus damage here. But the big thing is that they'll do that lunge attack when they die. Uh, and then you get bonus damage off of that, obviously, which does decent damage on its own. But then when they die, they leave a corpse, which then, you know, continues that cycle. For Skeletal Warriors, we're picking up Reapers because they have a 15% chance to carve off the flesh of enemies, forming a corpse. So as your Skeletal Warriors are attacking, they're spawning corpses. As your Bone Mages are kamikaze into the target, they're spawning corpses. On top of that, it just ha helps you add to the corpse explosion rotation. We do want the rotting aspect, which makes it so that decompose chains to additional targets. And when decompose spawns a corpse, is a chance to spawn a corpse under all afflicted targets that are being hit by decompose. So when it spreads to additional targets and you get that decompose procs, which is every 2.5 seconds, there's a very high chance on this to spawn additional corpses. So you can actually get it. So decompose spawns, you know, three plus corpses while you're channeling, which gives you a nice buildup. You spend the Bone Spirit, if you didn't get a kill, you channel Decompose, and you'll start spawning tons and tons of corpses while you're waiting for more corpses to spawn up from all your passive effects. On top of that, we want to pick up the aspects later on that allow us to increase our Skeletal Mages by two, and then also increase our Skeletal Warriors by two, because not only does that give us more damage, but it also allows us to generate more corpses, since they both do that. The Embalmer aspect gives us a chance to spawn a Blood Orb when we consume a corpse, which we're doing all the time. So you'll see Blood Orb spawn. It's a nice way to get, keep yourself healthy, but also there's a super nice unique, which again, I know it's super late game. You won't get this right away, but it means that when you pick up Blood Orbs every so often, a free Bone Spirit will spawn, which will gain benefits from the modifiers you already have on the ability and then deal bonus damage, which is great for killing bosses as you're consuming corpses and blood orbs. And it also means you'll spawn more corpses from the, the, the targets that you kill from the free bone spirit. You can also modify the ossified essence key passive even more to give it more crit damage on top of the crit and the bonus damage you already have. So having a full spend on bone spirit uh, just gives you really nice bonus damage on top of that. And then we're also gonna wanna pick up the swelling curse, which increases the damage dealt on bone spirit based on distance traveled. So if there's mobs that are far away or you're sitting at max screen range of a boss, you can throw out a Bone Spirit, single target damage goes through the roof. And lastly, I'll leave you with another end game goal. This is another unique that you won't be able to get access to right away. It's gonna take you a while, but once you do, oh, instead of detonating immediately, Corpse Explosion summons a volatile skeleton, just like your ultimate army of the dead does. It charges a random enemy and explodes. So it means that your explosions are a little bit more delayed, but they are more targeted, and it's super useful against bosses as well. But the big thing is that corpse explosions damage is increased. So while you do have to play a little bit differently when you have volatile skeletons versus instant exploding corpse explosions, you do get a nice substantial damage buff to corpse explosion. So that's the build. And there you go. Corpse explosion, the putrid detonator necromancer build. I hope you're excited just like I am for the launch of the game, and I hope this build has inspired you if you want to use it, we'll have the build down in the description and you can uh, find me on my live stream. If you have any questions for me, I'd be happy to answer them. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content. Link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.